Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Swagman XC2 here on the back of our 2020 Ford Escape. Now this can be a nice simple way of giving yourself a little carrier to get your bikes to and fro wherever your destination might be taking you. Now in my opinion, you guys are going to see very minimalistic rack, which is going to give you some nice little features to go ahead and accommodate for a variety of different bikes. However, going to be excellent for yourself if you want something really small and compact that's going to be really easy to take off your car, get it inside your apartment, wherever. Smaller storage areas options, going to have no trouble with it as it does go ahead and fold up quite nicely for ourselves. So the big takeaway for me, this is going to be great for yourself. You're looking for something just really easy to go ahead and start getting a couple bikes to that destination. Not going to be breaking the bank, but still giving you a nice little features to get your bike to and from. Now, right out of the gate, though, you are going to have a frame mount here. So, if you're looking away of transporting your carbon frame bikes, unfortunately, this won't be an option. That downwards pressure can end up warping and deteriorating those carbon frames, and we definitely don't want that. So, this wouldn't be a good option for yourself. Now, since we do have a varying height here on this middle post, we should have no trouble with a bunch of different bikes. Even if you have women bikes, women bikes, step through bikes, or kids bikes, you're gonna have an easy time clamping on here as you have this entirety different of height and different subsets of cradles to go ahead and latch down. So I don't think we're gonna have any issue getting almost anything we need up on here as long as it's fitting within our 35 pound weight capacity per bike. So that puts you pretty much well within your standard amounts and even up into that mountain bike range of weight capacity. So it should be a decent job of getting those bikes to and fro. If you're looking for something a little heavier, probably gonna have to start looking at more premium bike rack options. They're just more situated for your heavy bikes, of course, but this is still gonna be nice for us just to get ourselves to where we want to go. Now, right here on the end of the cradles, these are kind of nice too, because they are adjustable. All we have to do, simply undo these knobs a little bit here. Let me go ahead and actually get these guys completely changed around. Of course, you can change that positioning too, depending on your bike needs, but that's gonna be great because you can get a variety of different bikes on here, right? Maybe you're taking yourself out and every now and then you take a friend, we can go ahead and adjust those cradles or if whoever's coming with you at the family, you can go ahead and quickly change those without too much trouble at all. That way we can go ahead and have a nice secure hold on our bike. So that's an excellent option for ourselves. Well, it doesn't take us too much long to actually get the bike off. To do so, I'm just gonna go right up to our handles, simply press in on that lever, it's gonna allow this to go up. Otherwise, it's gonna be nice and secure there by our handle. Now, one last thing before we go ahead and remove this, taking a look at how the bike is sitting on our Escape. I like how it's kind of low here. Our tires here today aren't really exceeding too much into our taillight. However, if you did have slightly of a beefier bike, you might have a little bit of an issue there just with it sitting right with your taillight. Now, one thing I will say though, I'm not the biggest fan of is our exhaust is gonna be right here near our tire. So if you have some really nice tire and rims, it might be a little bit of a concern for us. Now we have a very good speed facing between that exhaust. However, you're still gonna have a little bit of heat. So I might say, just be checking it for sure once especially you get the bike off. I think if you give it time to cool off as well, you're not gonna have too much issue. We just don't wanna be pressing on that rim while it's hot, brittle, we don't be breaking it. So I think as long as we're watching it, I think we're at a good distance where it's not gonna cause any permanent damage sitting there. However, just be careful and watch that heat as it might be rising on your carrier. So, but we can go ahead and completely take this off. We're gonna go ahead and now that I've got my top element moved. I can go ahead and get my next arm here. This is gonna be my last hold on my bike, so I don't want this tilting into the vehicle or myself to cause damage. I wanna hold on here, simply unlatch it, and walk my bike off. Doesn't take any time at all to do, and now we're ready to ride. Now, mounting it becomes just as easy, except the reverse of what you just saw. We just simply walk it right in. These cradles are nice, because you can go ahead and set those tires in there like you guys saw, and it kind of cinches in there and sinks down just a little bit. Makes it really easy to balance that and bring your arms right back down on top. So, really doesn't take too much time at all, which I love to see. So, we can go ahead and put these arms on just for our sake here today. And let's go ahead and start working at some of our dimensions here. So clearance is still gonna be a slight little issue here for ourselves. We're getting a nice slight little rise out of our shank, but let's go ahead and see exactly what we're working with. From the ground to the very end here, we can go ahead and check our carrier limit here, and that's gonna be putting us right around 17 and a half inches there. And one thing to keep in mind too with XC2, your wheels actually hang a little bit lower than the carrier. So you're probably looking around 16 inches or so of actual 
actual clearance with your wheels there. And that is kind of a bigger thing because we don't want that wheel making contact, pushing up against our arms, potentially damaging our bike. So let's definitely be careful with this clearance here. Now it's not the worst I've seen, it's not the best. So if you have a very steep incline, just keep in mind those front wheels going up means the back will go down and so will your hitch mounted accessories. If you do find yourself approaching a very steep hill, let's just be conscious of it. And very, I would be very careful taking this guy off-roading. However, I don't think most of us are going to be reaching that kind of uh, degree of use. So I think we'll be okay. Well, we also are going to be adding a little bit of length here on our vehicle. Let's go ahead and see exactly what we're working with. From the inside here, from the very back to the outside, is going to be putting us right under 19 inches there, about 18 and three quarters of length. Now, that's not going to be the worst I've seen out of there. You only have a two bike platform rack, of course, and we are actually kind of kept to that. We can't actually tilt this away any. However, we still can go ahead and access our cargo. So, yes, we're stuck with that overall length. Let's go ahead and see how exactly we can access access that our middle mast here is just simply going to be folding up to do so we just pull out this little pin right here and it's going to go ahead and allow this to swing down out of the way and now i can go and directly access my hatch if i need to get those helmets coolers anything i might need from the inside now one thing i will say it kind of can be a little hard to get to now we do have a way of bringing these arms in let's see if we can't do that at the same time here but unfortunately you can't really get this to be static as you can't get that secondary post to go in while your mast is kind of hanging in the way however maybe you have something really heavy you can get that arm set out to the side use your hook and then get to your cooler, your bigger ones. Now keep in mind, this is freestanding, so just be conscious of that, but you still have ways of manipulating it and getting to that back of your vehicle if you need to. So that can be a nice little way of just getting the back there, getting everything we need without having to crawl over all the seats. We can bring that mast up in no time at all by simply supporting it, walking it, and finding that alignment one more time. And while we're here, when I kind of showed you guys briefly, we actually can bring in each of these side arms. So we just have a simple little pin that gets removed, got a little ball point holding it in there. And all we gotta do is simply align these back up, find that position, walk them in and as you guys are going to see it does a really good job of allowing ourselves to get this nice and collapsed for us so on the back here of our escape you can see made it a lot easier to get a little bit of turning radius there not going to be worried about this back ends now it was sitting pretty close to the vehicle so we're not getting a ton of maneuverability out of it but as you guys can see nice that we can go ahead and get it in this position however i think where this really starts excelling you guys can see of how small this bike rack gets to be so storing this becomes really easy we just simply take it out and you can actually take out the back shank as well and that makes it really easy to store and limited options so like apartment dwelling uh, if you're in the city somewhere, a lot of you guys have those closets on the outside of the balcony. This can be a nice way of storing those. Or if you have limited garage space, we're not going to be taking up nearly as much room as we would with a lot of other carriers. And I think that's where the XC2 really starts to shine. I've seen how modular it can be, how much we can get it nice and concise, get it right back out in working order in no time for those weekend drives. is going to be excellent for ourselves. So moving our way to the inside here, though, we can go ahead and see that we do have a inch and a quarter shank here naturally. However, we also are using our two inch hitch converter here, allowing us to utilize our two inch hitch. And on the inside, you are seeing a threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt there, making sure that we are gonna be nice and secure there on the inside out of our hitch. Now these are very standard. You still love to see them though. So they're gonna be taking all that play out for our carrier. And as you guys are gonna watch, as I shake this thing, it's actually shaking the entirety of the escape that's making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bike rack, and especially our bike as it sits on there. And it just has a little retaining clip holding into place, just keeping it there for ourselves. Now, the one thing with XC2, it doesn't have a lot of great security options. Now, there's a lot of aftermarket stuff we can also grab here at eTrailer.com to go ahead and start outfitting this completely. However, I really see the big advantage of this guy being so easy to take in and out. Even if we get to our destination, it really wouldn't take us much time to go ahead, pop this back out, and get it inside our vehicle if we need to. It's extremely lightweight and very easy to use, which is one little thing I really like about it. Now, if you're not quite a big fan of how much your wheels are being exposed on the XC2, there are a couple other ways of getting your bike to your destination. One that comes to mind is the Hollywood, Hollywood Destination 2 bike platform rack. That's going to go ahead and still give you a nice little platform rack and a lot of securance on your bike. And it'll just give you some cradles underneath it. Just makes for maybe a safer looking way of getting your bike there. However, this guy's still going to do a great little job, guys. I think it's excellent for those who are just starting to get into biking or if you just need 
in a bike rack, they can easily take in and out or off or on and have no trouble with at all. So can be a great little pickup. One thing to keep in mind here, we do have a little backup camera. That's gonna be seen a lot of the majority of our housing though here. So if you do fold it up, keep in mind, you're gonna be losing a lot of that vision that you might be seeing through that backup camera. One thing that's nice about this though, being so minimalistic, when we do have those arms down to the side, all we have to do is worry about that one little thin middle mast. So even with our bikes loaded up, if your bike's not too much of a beefy guy, you might be able to see right through it and still get a lot of vision out of that backup camera. Just keep in mind, fold it up like this, you're gonna lose a lot of that vision. Well guys, I think that about does it for our look here at the Swagman XC2 on our 2020 Ford Escape. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.